Oh, hello underwater photographers. Welcome back to Brent Durand Underwater. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Choosing an underwater camera system is one of the toughest decisions you'll make in scuba diving. There is all sorts of gear from the cameras to the housing, to the ports, to the lighting, to the accessories. It's daunting, it's expensive, and there's a lot to think through and a lot of decisions to make based on knowledge you don't have. So this video is about how to choose an underwater camera. Stay tuned, I'll walk you through the best process to make that happen. Let's start this intro. The first thing we want to consider when choosing an underwater camera is what your intentions are. Do you have very casual intentions or do you have very serious intentions and you want to spend a lot of time with the hobby? If you're on the casual side, you probably want a simple, more affordable camera, something with one button or just a couple of buttons that will help you capture underwater photo and underwater video and tell that story. If you have more serious intentions, you probably want to start working on composing and lighting better images, start looking into marine life behavior, and get involved in the editing process, maybe looking at software like Adobe Lightroom. So this is something to really keep in mind and will help us as we get into the second tip for choosing an underwater camera, which is determining your budget. So how much money do you have? How much are you willing to spend? Because this is really going to be a driving factor in the camera, the housing, and other accessories you're going to purchase. So stop, think about it. What can you afford? How much can you invest in a new hobby? Another thing to consider is your experience. Maybe you're brand new to photography in general, or maybe you're a very seasoned photographer shooting sports or landscapes topside who is very used to top of the line equipment and you're gonna be more demanding of your equipment underwater and you'll probably have a faster learning curve because you do have that experience topside and a lot of the photography concepts translate from topside to underwater. So that's something to keep in mind when you're determining your budget and starting to pick the direction to go for your camera selection. The third thing you want to consider is whether you plan to shoot mostly photo or mostly video or maybe some of both or actually maybe you just don't know. So having some sort of idea with this will help you move towards the type of camera you're going to want. And most cameras these days, whether it's compact, mirrorless or DSLR, do shoot fantastic video and fantastic photos. Most cameras now are spec'd with 4K video at at least 30 frames per second and shoot fantastic still images with high resolution, high ISO noise performance, and really fast autofocus. So even though you have the benefit of shooting both at once, there are certain cameras like the Panasonic GH5, which are well known for their video capabilities. You might have cameras that are known for both, um, like the Canon 5D Mark IV, and getting into the, some of the Sony Alpha series, especially the A7R series. So this is going to help drive what type of camera you want. If you don't know what you want to shoot, maybe you want to go for something more versatile that leaves you the space to shoot both photos and videos. So keep that in mind because camera specs may, depending on the camera, lean one way or the other. Our fourth consideration for choosing an underwater camera is determining what you want to shoot, what type of marine life and what type of photos. Now, if you're a newer diver, you might not have a good idea of that. So it kind of makes sense to stick with a more basic camera that has versatility between photo and video, because not only are you going to try and shoot some content underwater, but you're still working on your diving skills, particularly buoyancy, air consumption, navigation, and things like that that are so essential when you're an underwater photo or video shooter. For more experienced divers that have spent some time with the marine life, you may have a better idea of the marine life in your local area, or if you're more drawn towards macro photos, maybe macro photos that are colorful with black backgrounds, or maybe you just love the wide angle reef scenes with those beautiful soft corals and fans and colors, or the kelp forests, or maybe it's your local marine life. Maybe you swim by a lot of dolphins, or you have whale sharks, or you have sea lions, or something like that. And maybe you're a free diver, so you don't wanna bother with any of the lighting with strobes or video lights, and you wanna shoot ambient light, picture whales in the South Pacific. If that's your thing, then that's going to really influence your decision in terms of camera, lenses, and dome ports. And knowing what we want to shoot will also help with our camera specs. So if you want to shoot macro, maybe you're looking for a mirrorless or a DSLR camera with a crop sensor. But if you want to shoot a lot of ambient light, maybe ambient light shipwrecks down deep, then maybe you want to shoot with a full frame sensor that has more dynamic range and allows you to capture more information from the dark point to the light point of the image. If you want to shoot macro with a compact camera, then you want to look at lens specifications that are built into that compact camera because some will have different minimum focus distances that will make all the difference when you're shooting macro. 
So this all leads us into my fifth tip, which is to narrow down your top cameras. Now that we know what type of diving we're doing, what type of marine life we want to shoot, what style underwater photos we want to take, we can start to really look at those specs in alignment with our budget and keep that budget soft right now because we haven't gotten into the underwater gear, but narrow down to those top three cameras. What are the three that you think will work for you with your photography goals? So now we get into the underwater component, and this is really where your decision making can pivot completely as you start to look at underwater accessories and housings for your camera. The things to consider with the underwater housings are the price point, the port selection, especially for interchangeable lens cameras, and the ergonomics. Keep in mind when you're looking at the price that you're going to have to add accessories and various ports, maybe wet lenses, to the price of the housing. In considering price, there are a few defined price points. So we have a lower price point that has a very high value. We have a medium price point that's pretty wide that includes high build quality, excellent ergonomics, great port selection, and then you also have very high price points which are just the Ferraris and the Maseratis of the underwater housings. So you have to figure out what's going to work for you, keeping in mind all these other factors. Ports and wet lenses are also going to be interesting. Now, for a compact camera, you can shoot by just putting that camera inside of the housing and you're good to go. That's oftentimes the most economical way to start shooting photos underwater. But down the line, you may want to think about wet lenses and water contact lenses. This includes macro diopters for small subjects and also wide angle wet lenses. Both will screw on or pop onto the front of your port to allow you to shoot very small macro subjects or really wide scenes. And keep in mind for wide scenes, we want these wide angle lenses to get very close to the subjects and still see everything in the frame that we want to, like a big shipwreck or a big reef. So you want to look at that. If you're choosing an interchangeable lens camera, a mirrorless or a DSLR camera, now is when you wanna look at port selection. Do they have a bayonet mount or a pop-on, pop-off mount for the ports? Are the ports made of acrylic? Are they made of glass? Do they have the right size ports? Do they have a number of extensions that are interchangeable because that will save you money? And overall, how big is the port system? A lot of mirrorless cameras have very small lenses that require different size ports than a DSLR. So you're gonna save some space when you're traveling and in the size of your rig when you're taking it underwater by choosing a mirrorless camera. Now that's not true for all. A lot of the full frame mirrorless cameras have large housings and by that time you put on a port, it's going to be about the same size as a DSLR housing. So depending on what you want to sacrifice, what you want to give, you might choose between a mirrorless or a DSLR housing based on that port selection. So really look at the ports and talk to an expert and see what ports you wanna get based on what you wanna shoot and the lenses you're going to use to shoot that subject with. The very last thing is to consider the ergonomics. Now the best way to do this is to go to the, the retailer websites, manufacturer websites, really look at all of those photos, look at the resources online, but better yet, go to see your local underwater camera retailer or your local dive shop and get hands on with the systems. If you can go to a trade show where you know a lot of manufacturers will be present or retailers will be present, that's a great time too because you might be able to try the housing side by side and decide, you know, I really like the way this port system works or the way these ergonomics work on this type of housing for me and that will really drive your decision. So if at all possible, consider ergonomics in person where you can put your hands on the camera system. And part seven, if you're looking towards a mirrorless or a DSLR camera, we have a, a dynamic shift going on with the, the ports we choose for these cameras. And what I mean is traditionally we have put a lens on the camera inside the housing and used a port that matches that lens, whether it's a macro port for a macro lens or it's a wide angle uh, dome for a wide angle lens or a fisheye lens. And that was basically our decision making process. We could choose larger domes or smaller domes. These days, what you can do is pick a medium range lens. Maybe it's a 28 millimeter lens that's got a medium field of view. And what you can do is use a flat port and then use water contact optics to shoot macro or shoot wide angle using that same port. Now, if you're doing the traditional method and swapping ports, you may have more gear to carry around. But if you're using water contact optics, you're gonna have the benefit of having versatility on the same dive. Maybe you're setting up for wide angle, you'll pop on that wide angle conversion lens, but you'll put a macro diopter in your pocket 
And when you're going out and you're shooting, you may see this amazing nudibranch you've never seen before. Pop off that water contact lens, pop on the macro diopter, and now you have that versatility all with one lens and port in the camera. If you're switching between lenses and types of diving on a dive boat or a little dinghy or a ponga where you've got a lot of water and you don't want to open your housing, sometimes these water contact lenses are really great for that because you're leaving your camera and lens sealed inside the housing while swapping these port extensions. So there's pros and cons and something to consider when looking at your specific camera and what water contact lenses are available. Keep in mind, a lot of these are very expensive, so that's something else you'll need to figure out as you talk with the expert. And part number eight, so this is lighting and accessories. Now, if you're shooting ambient light and free diving, you can get away with just a wide angle lens in a camera and off you go. If you wanna shoot with any sort of lighting, and actually for ambient as well, I would always recommend a handle and tray system. A lot of DSLR cameras have those built into the housing, but a mirrorless or compact system will require you to add a tray and handle system. And what that does is it allows you a lot of stability to get smooth footage and to hold the camera and really work with the ergonomics of the buttons. Beyond that, if you wanna shoot underwater video, you probably wanna start looking towards video lights. Now with lights, more lumens is oftentimes better to create brighter images for wide angle, but I also recommend having two lights versus one light for wide angle shooting. If you wanna do macro video, one light could be all you need, but if you wanna shoot wide angle video or have the versatility for all sorts of video, you probably want two lights. So budget for the maximum lumens you can get while affording two lights and the arm and clamp system that attach to your tray and handle system. So just remember you'll need that. For still photos, you'll probably want one to two strobes. Now, one strobe is fantastic. It'll work great if you're shooting macro. And even for wide angle, especially close focus wide angle, you can use one strobe. So there's nothing wrong with one strobe. One strobe is great. But once you start wanting to shoot wider scenes, you probably want two strobes to help evenly illuminate large scenes. So one of the ways to go about this is to start with one strobe and your arms and clamp system. Remember, you have to pay for that. And then as you save up more money, you can add a second strobe. If you can buy two strobes off the bat, that's great. You're good to go there. One last accessory you'll probably want for macro shooters is an underwater focus light. And that is a small thousand lumen light that will attach to the top of the camera, but it will make all the difference in focusing underwater. So that's a lot of stuff, right? There's a lot of various bits and pieces and a number of things I didn't mention. You've got zoom gears, extension rings, fiber optic cables, and cases to hold all the gear and travel with the gear. Maybe you want clips for your BCD to clip off the camera. So there's a lot of decisions to be made. I hope this is helpful. Leave comments below if you have questions on gear or what you might need. I'm happy to help. Maybe other people in the community will help as well with the different gear that you might want with a certain camera or for a different style shooting. If you haven't checked it out yet, go to my website, tutorials.brentdurand.com. Sign up for my newsletter. You'll be first to know about all these new videos. And again, remember to subscribe right there, that red button. Let's do it. Hip it, tap it, slap it, whatever you got to do. Let's stay tuned for more videos. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys soon.